December 22nd, Luke 2, 12 to 14. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, good will toward men. We three kings of Orient are, bearing gifts we travers afar, field and fountain, moor and mountain, following yonder star. Oh, star of wonder, star of light, star of royal beauty bright, westward leading, still proceeding, guide us with thy perfect light. Born a babe on Bethlehem's plain, gold we bring to crown him again. King forever, ceasing never, over us all to reign. Frankincense to offer have I, incense owns a deity nigh. Prayer and praising, all men raising, worshiping God on high. Oh, Star of wonder, star of might, star with royal beauty bright, westward leading, still proceeding, guide us with thy perfect light. Myrrh is mine, its bitter perfume, breathes a life of gathering gloom. Sorrowing, sighing, bleeding, dying, sealed in a stone cold tomb. Glorious now, behold him rise, King and God and sacrifice. Heaven sings hallelujah, hallelujah, earth replies. Oh, Star of wonder, star of light, oh, might, star with royal beauty bright, westward leading, still proceeding, guide us with thy perfect light. Okay, what's our story? Trouble at the End by Di Dinah Donahue. <clears throat> For many years now, whenever Christmas pageants are talked about in a certain little town in the Midwest, someone is sure to mention Wallace Perling. Wally's performance in one annual production of the Nativity Play has slipped into the realm of legend, but the old-timers who were in the audience that night never tire of recalling exactly what happened. Wally was nine years old and in the second grade, though he should have been in the fourth most people in town knew that he had difficulty keeping up. He was big, clumsy, slow in movement and mind. Still, Wally was well-liked by the other children in his class, all of whom were smaller than he. Though the boys had trouble hiding their irritation when Wally would ask to play ball with them, or any game for that matter, in which winning was important, most, of them, <clears throat> most often they'd find a way to keep him out. But Wally would hang around anyway. Not sulking, just, just hoping. He was always a helpful boy, a willing and smiling one, and the natural protector of the underdog. Sometimes if the older boys chased the younger ones away, it would always be Wally who'd say, can't they stay? They're no bother. Wally fancied the idea of being a shepherd with a flute in the Christmas pageant that year, but to the play's director, Miss Lombard, assigned him to a more important role. All, after all, she reasoned, the innkeeper didn't have too many lines, and Wally's size would make his refusing of the lodging of Joseph more forceful. And so it happened. 
that the usual large partisan audience gathered for the town's yearly extravaganza of beards and crowns and halos and a whole stage full of squeaky voices. No one on stage or off was more caught up in the magic of the night than Wallace Perling. They said later that he stood in the wings and watched the performance with such fascination that from time to time, Miss Lombard had to make sure he didn't wander on stage before his cue. Then the time came when Joseph appeared, slowly, tenderly guiding Mary to the door of the inn. Joseph knocked hard on the wooden door set into the painted backdrop. Wally, the innkeeper, was there waiting. What do you want? Wally said, swinging the door open with a brusque gesture. We seek lodging. Seek it elsewhere. Wally looked straight ahead but spoke vigorously. The inn is filled. Sir, we've asked everywhere in vain. We've traveled far and are very weary. There is no room in this inn for you. Wally looked properly stern. Please, good innkeeper, this is my wife, Mary. She's heavy with child and needs a place to rest. Surely you must have some small corner for her. She's so tired. Now for the first time, the innkeeper relaxed his still stance and looked down at Mary. With that, there was a long pause, long enough to make the audience a bit tense with embarrassment. No, be gone, said the prompter, whispering from the wings. No, Wally said, be gone. Joseph sadly placed his arm around Mary. Mary laid her head upon her husband's shoulder, and the two of them started to move away. The innkeeper did not return inside his inn, however. While he stood there in the doorway watching the forlorn couple, his mouth was open, his brow creased with concern, his eyes filling unmistakably with tears. And suddenly this Christmas pageant became different from all the others. Don't go, Wally cried out. Bring Mary back. And Wallace Perling's face grew into a bright smile. You can have my room. <laughs> Some people in town thought this pageant had been ruined. Yet there were others, many, many others, who considered it the most... Christmassy of all Christmas pageants they had ever seen. I love this story. It's so tender, so sweet. I love my special ed students. I can totally see them doing something like that. This, the goodness in their hearts just touches me. I love it. Please go out and find someone to give your room to. Reconsider when you have been unkind or brusque with someone and do a do-over like Wallace Pearlie.